The Golden State Warriors are at the all-star break. They're a game above 500. It's been a crazy season. We still have a lot to go. And I thought, who better to bring on this program than the man, the myth, the legend, Rick Buecher. He's been covering this game for decades, still is for FS1 among many publications. And he joins me next to talk Warriors. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors. Your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is an absolute pleasure to have my next guest join the program. He's with FS1. He's been with ESPN, I believe the Washington Post, if I'm not mistaken. He True. is a master of his craft. I respect you so much, Rick. I'm wearing a collared shirt. How the hell are you doing, sir? Welcome to the program. <laughs> and I, I, I don't want to hold you too long. We just we, before we started recording, you said you're going surfing. Mad respect. I, I'm, you, I'm sure you know I'm a, I've been been a surfer most of my life. Um, but what is your what is your initial reaction? In the in I mean you're you're again you're excellent when it comes to being a wordsmith. So in your words, how are the Warriors doing into the All Star break? One game above 500. A lot of different narratives this year. It's been a crazy yeah. year. Your thoughts, sir. Take it away. They're figuring it out. They are they are a work in progress, and and they are making progress. The, the so you know the, the what the run of eight out of the last ten is better than the way it was going earlier, where you could tell that they just weren't sure who was going to play with who and how they could get the most out of out of this team. Now I. I do think that their margin for error is is very small. And so Steve Kerr is trying to figure out how do we put reputations, egos, feelings, how do we put all of that aside and just figure out who has to play when in order for us to squeeze the absolute most out of this team? Because if they don't do that, I think what they've discovered is they may not be in the playoffs mm -hmm. uh, or they're in the play in and who knows what happens. So uh, I, I, they've, they're figuring some things out um, and, and they're making progress and where that leaves them at the end of the year remains to be seen. But I, I think that they can go into the all-star break feeling as good about themselves as they have all year. Like okay. we figured out a few things do we think it's championship level? No, but like we're moving in the right direction and I wouldn't put anything more on it than that. And I, and I will say this too. Like I, I do believe I, that, that there's reason to take uh, solace uh, or satisfaction out of what Clay Thompson has had to go through and what Andrew Wiggins being benched and playing and, and then you get, you know, the Pajemskis who are showing you something and you're getting the evolution of, of Jonathan Kaminga. And you think Chris Paul's out and Draymond Green was out. And so, like, you know, there's reason for cautious optimism that, that, that they are going to be, they're going to be okay. They're going to be in the playoff picture. And once you get in the playoff picture, then you have a chance as the, the Lakers demonstrated last year going through the play in and winding up in the Western conference finals. So it can happen. This has been, I don't know if you agree with me or not. And this Warriors team, especially if you're covering them as a journalist, like you have been, um, you know, this is of all the years, it's always entertaining. It's always a wild ride. Yeah. There's usually a lot of drama. And, and, you know, when you have dream on green and this cast, that's part of the territory. But this year, it's been borderline exhausting. I mean, because mm -hmm. like you said, the identity has not really been figured out. 
every day it's a new story. Have yeah. you ever in all your years covering this? And when I say this, I mean the NBA and then maybe more specifically the Warriors. Has it have you ever experienced a more tumultuous season? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, Examples, they, please. The at the very beginning of my career, when I covered them when they acquired Chris Weber, and then oh, yeah. they 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 he didn't want to stay after his first year. The first year was that was tumultuous. That was very tumultuous. And then <laughs> yeah. The start of the next year when he held out and they started out seven and one and then they ended up like 14 and whatever, like, um, I don't know, maybe they, they won a couple more games in 14, but maybe 21. I don't know. And at any rate, fell off a cliff and then Nelly basically resigned, got fired at the all-star break and, that team was those two years were very, very chaotic. So this is not that. Yeah. Um, fair. I think That's what fair. makes this, but I do agree with you. I think that the season has been exhausting because there's always been drama around this team. There's always been, you know, flashes of personality, but it never got in the way of them winning. And, and that's the right. difference here is that, You've got all of this conflict and controversy and they're not able to seal the deal on the court the way they once could. And that's what makes it exhausting because you're like, ah, can you, can we just stop some of the drama and, <laughs> and maybe we'll get a little more of what m has made them exciting and uh, has given fans a desire to embrace them in spite of whatever's going on. It's just like, you know, when you're a 500 team and you got lots of turmoil, like that's for for what the expectations are for the Warriors. That's 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 exhausting. Absolutely. Um, you know, I want to I want to get into some of the nitty gritty in a moment, but um, let's start with Clay because you mentioned to me before we started uh, recording that you're writing a book on him, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, not on that, him. About him, correct? No, not really. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, 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 explain, please. I don't I'm want to writing a book. Uh, the working title is Coachable, The Difference Between Good and Great. And it is talking to um, some of the greatest athletes ever, some athletes that you may not be familiar with, who um, John Staten, the, the fourth, is a, a was a walk on a two time walk on walked on at Sanford University worked his way up the ladder, then was a walk-on at the University of Georgia, which was always where his dream was to play, and ended up playing, starting on special teams and winning uh, a championship with them in 2022. Two-time walk-on. Uh, and it's really about identifying what being coachable means mm. and the 10 truths of it and how do you synthesize your vision of who and what you are and want to be with someone else's vision of who and what you can be. Um, and that is the essence of being coachable. And Michael Jordan said, that was the defining difference for me, for all of my athleticism, for, for everything that, uh, that I had, my temperament. The reason that I reached the level that I did was because I was coachable, that I was mm. willing to accept someone else's idea of how I should play. And so mm. I mentioned that to you when, when in reference to Clay, because I'm just, I literally just signed the contract for the book. Congratulations. Uh, That's awesome. Earlier today. Congrats. I'm just in the throes of starting, but, um, Clay's, what Clay's experiencing right now rings true to a lot of the elements to this book, which is like you get one of the 10 truths is at some point, everyone is a scrub. Like, and it's wet, you know, it could be at the beginning, like when you're, when you're working your way up and you want to be a star, but that's not your role right now. And you're not mm -hmm. good enough to be that, or it's on the tail end, the, the Grant Hills and the Jason kids who one time stars. And then it's like, yeah, but you're not that anymore. Can you accept the new reality for you and what you're being asked to do? Um, 
I just had this conversation with Brandy Chastain, who will probably be in the book. Wow, and I okay. didn't really know this, but you know, a, a glimpse into into this is she like she will tell you I could have scored as many goals as Mia Hamm. To this day, she believes I am like I, I I'm one of the greatest goal scorers ever as a as a, an American woman. But for her to be on the national team, she had to play defense. They wanted to, her to be a defensive midfielder. Mm. And so that was her. So she accepted that, accepted that she was going to be different. And then lo and behold, she scores one of the most iconic goals in U.S. women's soccer history, which would have never happened if she had stuck to, no, this is who I am and not accepted someone else's idea of, but this is who we need you to be. And right now, Clay is having to come to accept, this is who we need you to be. You can be a dynamic scorer for this team coming off the bench playing against second units. We're not sure you can be that kind of guy playing against first units at this point, especially right. with Steph, your splash brother, looking over and like, God, I got to get Clay going. I got to get Clay going. Well, if he's not starting, then Steph doesn't feel that responsibility to try to make that happen. And then the team is just playing and mm -hmm. trying to, and, and, and playing it at its, at, at its optimal. So um, that's why when you, you know, the, the, the subject of clay came up, like what he's experiencing is, is, is some of the fodder for, for this book. And I'm planning at some point to, to sit down and talk with him about that, to see what his, you know, how he's dealing with this. Cause that's what I ultimately want is I want this book to be for athletes and parents and coaches of, of athletes today coming up to understand this is how the great ones made them allowed themselves to be coachable. And this is what being coachable means. Cause I'm not sure that everybody understands like, I think today it's like, yeah, I'm coachable when the coach is telling me to do what I want to do and give me <laughs> the role that I want. And if I'm, if, and if not, then I need to be, go be coachable for somebody else who's going to do that for me. Yeah, that's, that, that's not uh, that's not how it works. Rick, in this day and age, getting a book deal is harder than ever. So I can't be, uh, begin to express my my happiness for you. That's phenomenal news, tremendous. Thank Congratulations you. on that. Let's definitely get you back on once you're ready to publish the book so we can promote it. All right, let's show some love to some of the folks who pay the bills here at Locked On Warriors. First up is an awesome sponsor, and that's eBay Motors. And our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On fantasy basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long, whether you're prepping for a daily draft, scouting the waiver wire, Every week, we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So let's see who Josh has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. This is the third time I'm doing this, so I'm going to go with someone new. Uh, we've already talked about Marvin Bagley the third. We've already talked about Oscar Thompson, a, a player I love who the Warriors were also interested in before his value got too high. Uh, Taylor Hendricks, Cody Martin, and Benedict Matherin are the three remaining players that Lloyd has provided some insight on. And I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with Cody Martin, who health permitting could find himself in a strong role for Charlotte with Gordon Hayward now in OKC. And again, Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof rack, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply.
You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. And you can follow Rick Buecher with FS1. The man has been all over the place when it comes to the media landscape. Follow him on Twitter at Rick Buecher. That's Rick without a K. It's R-I-C-B-U-C-H-E-R. You know, on the flip side of the Clay Thompson coin in terms of of being a coachable player, especially at this stage of his career, is Jonathan Kaminga, who uh, has had his own gripes in terms yep. of being a player and the way he's coached. Um, you know, in my humble opinion, he's a phenomenal talent. It's remarkable yep. that his public complaints worked. <laughs> it's it's. I mean, that's not every day that you see that where, you know, a player, especially of his age, uh, publicly criticizes his coach and his and his role, and then he ends up getting more more playing time, and he actually delivered. Um, but he also hasn't finished the last three games. And then there's another young player named Moses Moody, who I think is phenomenally talented, who's getting DNPs. What is your opinion on that side of the coin with these younger players for the Warriors? Yeah, I mean they're in, they're in a tough spot, and I and I do like with Kaminga. I think they've given him opportunities, and sometimes he's coming through come through, and sometimes he hasn't. And, and the reality is for where the Warriors are, again, with their margin of error, mm-hmm. they're, they're trying to, you know, they're trying to milk every bit that they can out of this team. But they don't have that, that margin of error. They don't have it there to go through growing pains. And, uh, you know, with Moody, I think with Moody, it's more a case of it's not that he had, there's just limited minutes in the role that he's playing. And Pajemski has been such a revelation that I think that that's what has hurt, has, has hurt Moses. And it's, and it's, it's the little dynamic things like Pajemski and his remarkable rebounding gets you mm-hmm. extra, extra possessions. Mm-hmm. Like Moses can shoot the hell out of it. Pajemski shoots it well, and he gets me extra possessions, and he's making plays, and Steph and Draymond trust him. Like, it's hard as a coach. Like, it's nothing against Moses. It's just like everybody's responding to this guy, and this guy is doing more than you are doing. I got to, I got to, I have to give him minutes. It's, it's, Mm -hmm. The thing that kind of drives me a little nutty when I see fans talking about so and so should get more minutes. Okay, hold on. Whose minutes are you taking? And you can't just this isn't fantasy, so it's not like you you have a you have an allotted number of minutes and you have an allotted number of minutes at particular positions. I, I see the same thing with Lakers fans. They're they're all up in arms about Tari and Prince playing as many minutes as he does. And how come Rui Hachimura doesn't play more minutes? And I'm like, Rui Rui Hachimura plays the same position as Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Rui can't guard perimeter players. Mm -hmm. Like he's not playing wing. So it's not Tari and Prince's minutes. He's not taking minutes from Rui. LeBron is taking minutes from Rui. And you saw the other night, like LeBron sat against Utah. Like in Rui at third, Rui at 35. It a big right? night. Mm-hmm. That so it it it's it's not that Steve's got something against Moses. It's like I I I don't have a whole lot of wiggle room here, and this guy is doing more in his minutes on the floor than you are. So I, that's the guy I've got to play. Yeah, and, and Rick, let me know if you agree or disagree with with my. It is an opinion, obviously. Most of this is that I think Steve Kerr has a crutch when it comes to point guards. And you, you bring up the minutes, and like last night's game, for example, and I love Lester Quinones. I think his his rise to ascension here, he's probably going to get a guaranteed deal uh, next week. 
But when you talk about the minutes, he got almost 17 minutes in last night's game. And I feel like that's a player that maybe Moody should be taking minutes from uh, in a game that's positionless. Um, that's where I kind of understand the gripes. And I, and I agree with the gripes. I, I just it, I, I'm totally with you, though, too. I don't think Steve Kerr has anything personal against these individuals. Yeah. Um, but it's but it's just about your approach. Right. It's about what you think is is best for the team, I guess. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I think there's 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 also like so how are you going to find out whether Lester can give you any like what he can be before you have to make a decision on the contract? Interesting. Right. Interesting. So, yes. You know, you this this may be that little gap where you do that. You know what you have in Moses. Right. And the team is now playing well. So now I can like I can win a game and find out what Lester might be or not be or whether I can use him or whatever. So there's always a lot of layers going on to like, again, the evolution, especially this team, right? Yes. This year, it's like we're in discovery. So how do we win games, but find out what we really have and what guys can really do. And so I look, I'm a big Moses Moody fan. And there's been times where I felt like, yeah, he's he was shorted, you know, but it was it was let's try to get clay going. Mm -hmm. Right. And 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 so you have that. I mean, you see what an evolution it has been to get clay to this place where he's accepting coming off the bench. You can't just you can't just go from zero to 60 on that. You just can't go from you're starting playing 35 minutes till you coming off the bench like <laughs> You got to massage your way there, not just for Clay, but the entire team. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 and and this is not to say that Steve's pushed every button correctly, or that there haven't been times where you go, yeah. And I mean, he, he would admit that. I, I, I have no doubt. Like, yeah, I probably should have played so and so. But I gotta say too, man, having coached, um, having a daughter who's playing collegiately now and so sure. being very aware of the minutes. She's down in, down in Florida at a, a, a D2. Congrats. Uh, That's D2. awesome, man. Um, but con like, so I'm watching their team and I'm watching, you know, I mean, she's, she, she plays a lot. She's third most on the team on minutes, but I'm watching the coach, like trying to manage the minutes with his team and injuries and everything. And, and I've, coached so I, I know like there's times where you just like your mind is on how do I make this work not yes. like is so and so getting enough minutes right you you get to <laughs> yeah. the end of the game and you look at the at the box score and you go oh man I probably should have found a way to get so and so more minutes or done something different but that's that is not at the top of your priority list when you're in the heat of the battle Absolutely. And my coaching experience was more on the youth side. So a lot of my headaches were with parents um, oh, in, addition well, to, that. <laughs> in addition to trying to make it work and being successful, making everyone happy. It is a complex uh, uh, paradigm. And there's also so many perspectives because as from my experience as a former player, like I hated it when coaches would put me in positions that I wasn't comfortable in. Oftentimes yeah. coaches wanted me to play uh, in the post uh, trying yeah. to play forward. And I'm like a little guy. I'm like, what are you doing to me? Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's you, there's so many perspectives. There's so many different angles to look at this from. Um, Rick, so I know that, you got to go ahead. Sorry. By the way is like, that's, they asked me who I was writing the book for when I, yeah. when I discussed it with, with the various publishers. And I said, I'm writing it for the athlete, but the parents and the coaches are in the room next door, listening to the conversation. Right. Because in your instance, like what would be important is the coach explaining to you why he needs you to play that position. Exactly. Within the concept of the team. Like, I know this is uncomfortable for you. I know I'm asking you to step outside of your comfort zone, but this is why I'm asking you to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandy said the same thing. She was like, man, like at first I'm thinking, why are you making me play defensive midfielder? And then it was like, she thought, you know what? They must think I'm pretty good if they, if they want to like put me in a different position in order to have me on the team and on the floor. Right. 
Right. But if that conversation doesn't happen and if the parents don't recognize, like, you know, it's not about your kid, what your vision is of how they become a star. It's your, it's your kid learning how to take on challenges and adapt to them. That yeah. ultimately should be the thing that sports teaches all of us. It, it teaches us so much, Rick. No doubt about that. And Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA, an IRA. Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal information. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep your Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. You are locked on Warriors. Your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day for the everydayers. I hope you have a great weekend. It's all-star, the all-star break is here. Uh, and next week, while the team is on vacation, while the NBA is on hiatus, uh, we're going to be having some guests. Mark Jones, the voice of the NBA, alongside Mike Breen, will be joining the program. Uh, musician Valet from uh, New Zealand, huge Warriors fan. I'm going to bring him on just to get some fresh perspective. Uh, it should be a good time. We're gonna, it's going to be a guest-driven uh, 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 show. I'm also going to dedicate one episode just to Jonathan Kaminga. Uh, his background is fascinating. Uh, I don't think people understand who he is as an individual, especially his upbringing leading up to where he is with the Warriors now. So I'm going to dedicate one episode to the future superstar of the Golden State Warriors, the current star of the Golden State Warriors, Jonathan Kaminga. But for now, I have the man, the myth, the legend, Rick Buecher joining me. You can follow him on Twitter at Rick Buecher, Rick with no K. So it's R-I-C-B-U-C-H-E-R. Here's Rick. And the last time you were on this program, by the way, you, you, I respect your opinion so much. You, you were astute in correctly saying that we were discussing Clay and what to expect. And you said the biggest flag is going to be the drop off defensively. And you were spot on with that because I feel like that's the biggest liability with dealing with Clay's. The defense isn't there anymore, you know? Um, Anyways, I, I know you got to go. Uh, let's promote everything you got going on. I want, you, you've got a lot. I mean, you're contributing regularly to FS1. Yep. Uh, you know, you're a Bay Area presence. You're the former host of the morning show for the Warriors flagship, 95.7 The Game. You, you've, been, you've covered everything, and I respect you tremendously, sir. What do you have going on? I know you got a podcast. You have your book. Promote away, please. So I have the book. Uh, should be coming, well, okay, when will it come out? It'll come out in 2025. We're a ways away. Um, okay. Uh, I've got uh, the On the Ball podcast. Uh so check that out. That comes out on a weekly basis. Latest one will be will be posting uh, later today. Uh, and what what is, is that like an interview based show, or are you just analyzing the game? What, what it's me picking a subject that I think needs to be addressed, some hot 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 button subject that everybody's talking about at the time, and trying to 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 give you my view on it. Uh, this episode will be about the uh, the all star selection process and the debate over. Do we change it? Do you expand to 15? And if you look at it historically, it's changed a lot over the years. And ultimately, we've given it far more credence or legitimacy as a reflection of greatness than it really deserves. It's 
It's a marketing gimmick, okay? That's what it is. <laughs> it is trying to draw interest and engagement from fans. That's it, all right? So uh, when we think, you know, he's an eight-time All-Star. And if then if you really kind of examine, like, the eight times how the guy was – like, how many times was he repla an injury replacement – how many times was he a starter, which under the fan vote was just a popularity contest? Like, if you really break it down, you're like, man, he he had he was an eight time All Star and he had three good seasons. Like, <laughs> so um, getting into getting into that, you can read me on uh, FoxSports.com and the Fox Sports app, and you can see me on on FS FS1 on our various afternoon shows. And I think Love that's it. basically. It. Hopefully That's you won't it. see me won't see me in the water later today getting pummeled. So. <laughs> it's cold right now, man. I, I've in my now older years, I don't go in the water from uh, basically December through February. So, so oh kudos to you. wow, kudos to you. I Come take on, a break, man. You got to get it in before the winds kick up. And <laughs> no. Well, I've I've got a few spots where the even in the spring the winds don't affect it that much. So okay. that's fortunately yep. for me uh, not a deterrent. But I totally hear what you're saying. Um, have fun out there, Rick. I, I look forward to bumping into you at Warriors games. I'm not, I don't go much these days. I don't know how often you're going, but um, I was at the Clippers. I, I was at the Clippers game just just here. Oof, right. oof, what a game that was, my lord. Um, and congrats on your daughter. I know you got a, you got more than just one kid, but congrats. You must be a proud papa, my, my man. That's uh, I've, I've been flying to Florida a lot to see games. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, I love it's it. A, it's been both of my kids had great high school careers uh, here in the Bay Area. And uh, and I told them, I said, if you want to play in college, great. If you don't, you've already given me like the most joy in being able to just watch them compete and compete at a high level. And they're both playing playing in college. So I feel like I got four more years. Bravo, sir. Bravo on everything. Uh, it's impressive. Your entire body of work is very impressive. Rick Buecher. Follow him on Twitter, at Rick Buecher. It's Rick with a C, no K. Uh, and thank you, sir. Hope to get you back on soon. You got it. Thank you, Cyrus. Thank you, Rick. And thank you, everyone. We'll be back at this soon. Bye-bye.